Hi, and welcome to Saturday Night Spiritual here from the Founders MCC Facebook page and everywhere. FoundersMCC.org, SheenaMetalSpiritual.com. I am Reverend Sheena Metal, and uh, I'm here the second Saturday of every month at 5 o'clock Pacific Time, bringing you interfaith messages. This is an interfaith service. A um, little bit of everything makes a lot of everything. Everybody's welcome. What my mama used to call a y'all come service. Uh, welcoming everybody from all across the spiritual and religious spectrum here for a universal light-based love-filled service. And I'm so excited to have you all. Um, I'm the Interfaith Pastor here at Founders MCC. Uh, it's almost five years. June will be the big five-year anniversary of Saturday Night Spiritual. Um, and I've been with the church for just a little bit longer than that. I'm so excited to be here and be a part of this with you. Um, every month I try to bring something, a message that Spirit Source, God Energy, delivers to me. And I try to bring it to you. Sorry, it's very dry in Southern California right now. So I need my trusty water bottle to get me through anything. I was just doing an interview for uh, a, a wonderful LGBTQI plus podcast called Left of Straight, talking a lot about spirituality and positivity and where we're going spiritually as queer people. <clears throat> and where we're going spiritually as human beings in general. Um, lots of questions about what's going to happen. I had a client earlier today <clears throat> ask me if the earth was going to blow up. Last night I did a on-camera spot on a, a talk show, and a lot of the questions were about war and is the world ending I think it's so easy to get caught up in that stuff, right? To listen to the news, watch the news, read the internet, listen to the podcasts, and get so caught up in this idea of we're all going to die. It's all going to end and we're all going to die. That's not what God wants for us. Because that is a continuous repetitive behavior of negativity thinking of all the bad things that are happening and have happened in the world and then allowing them to compile into this idea of the world is ending, humanity's ending, we're losing our freedom, we're going to lose all our rights in this world, in this country. You know, someone's going to push the button and the nuclear war is going to start. And what happens when we are consumed with those thoughts is we just keep pushing down, right? Pushing pushing our light down and allowing the fear to bring in negativity and darkness. And then those bad thoughts inspire more bad thoughts. And then it just compounds and compounds and compounds. We need the opposite of that. We need inclusion. We need positivity. We need light-based thoughts. We need to think of the best popular outcome, the best possible outcome. It doesn't mean we have to ignore what's really going on in the world. We don't have to pretend there's not some scary stuff that people are doing to each other every day on our planet. But the constant focus on that and the worry that it's going to lead to our ultimate destruction, it's not helping. It's not helping to lift us up. And then we start to have the more thoughts, like, are, are we bad? Are, are we, are we, am I not doing what I should be doing? Am, am I not a good person? Am, you know, does, does God hate me for whatever it is that I am and whatever it is that I've done? And then slowly, 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 the light begins to shrink in us. And with that, we begin to lose hope. And we begin to not 
believe it. There is a possibility that our lives will be great and that life in general will be great. You know, I love the great um, um, predictor Nostradamus, right? Nostradamus's predictions of the future were very interesting because he did get one clear set that were very doom and gloom. But he also got another clear set that were definitely utopian. And then let us know that we could make the choice for what the outcome would ultimately be. I love that. We make the choice. We can decide. And we decide by what do we put into the world? What are we doing to make it better? My mom always described to me the, the world as a, as a giant machine and that every one of us was a little piece of that machine, a little cog, a little mechanism, a little belt, a little bolt. And that if we as that little mechanism, we were doing what we were supposed to be doing. If we were doing the thing that we were supposed to be doing, then the whole machine would run better, right? Because every little piece is what makes something run. So yesterday I took a very long road trip. I went and I did a show and I took a super long road trip um, about two and a half hours north of where I live to go do it. And I'm in my car and I'm driving through some of these areas where there's nothing, right? And driving through areas of nothingness has never been, that's never been my favorite thing. So I start thinking like, I always think like, oh, what, what would happen if the car broke down right now? I don't want to be somewhere if the car is going to break down. But it doesn't, right? Because it's a new car. And I get it tuned up all the time. And it's in good shape. And every little piece of it is doing what it's supposed to do. Now, if something happened, like a bolt fell out, or a hole blew in something, or one of the parts decided not to run, the car might run, but not as efficiently, and eventually not at all. And that's us with the universe. We each have to do our own thing, right? We're each here to do our own thing. And our thing plays into the everything. And that overall everything is what makes the world run the way it's supposed to. It's what makes the world beautiful. It's like I know I talk a lot about vibration, and that's the basis of my nonprofit, RaisingTheVibration.org, is how do you lift your own vibration so that it really hums and resonates the way it's supposed to. And then how that, that inevitably will affect the vibrations of everybody around us. And then that helps to lift the vibration of the world, the universe, the everything, right? We do that. One of the best ways that we raise our vibration is we increase the light volume within us. We turn our volume up. What I like to call embracing the light within you. Because it's in there. So here's something I was talking to one of my clients about yesterday. I always say this. If you're looking for reasons why your life sucks, you'll find them. But if you're looking for reasons why your life rocks, you'll find that too. You just have to look for it. And that's, that's a big part of embracing the light within you. When you have those moments where you've got a little time to yourself and your mind starts to drift, try not to move into what have I not done? What am I not happy about? What is not happening in my life that I wish was? What am I upset about? What makes me unhappy? And try instead to move into a place of, what have I done? What's great? 
What makes me happy every day? What's a beautiful thing about me? How do I embrace the light within me? How do I love my life? What's involved in truly loving your life? It's so important that we spend time thinking about that. And I think we spend a lot of time ruminating on what we don't have and not spending enough time focusing on what we do have. And that's something that you can train yourself out of doing. Sometimes in the beginning, like, you got to literally sit down with a notebook and start making yourself write down things, lists, right? What am I not focusing on in my life that is great? What am I not giving myself credit for that's just as awesome in my life? Who in my life? Am I maybe not? How much time in our lives? This is a great example, right? How much time in our lives do we spend thinking about that one person that we think doesn't like us? Look, I've been guilty of this too, because I never want there to be any bad blood with anybody. I'm a human being. I want everybody to like me. How much time do we spend thinking about that person that doesn't like us? How can we get them back? How can we show them they were wrong about us? How can we prove to them that they had made a mistake? Okay. But what about all the people that whole time that loved you? That were great to you? That treated you great? Are we giving them the due that they deserve? It's, that, it's the focusing on the positive. Embracing the light within you. And sometimes the hardest thing to embrace in the light within us is to give ourselves credit for how wonderful we are. We don't want to do that. We want to downplay ourselves all the time, right? I'm not that great. Me. That's me again. I'm not that great. No, you are. We all are, right? Aren't we taught in the Bible that we were made in God's image? And I think sometimes we think that means like God looks like us, that God looks like a person, which you may believe if you wish. I don't personally believe that. But what if that's not what it means? What if it means that we were made in God's image? What if that means that we have the ability to spread light and love in the same way that God does. That we have the ability to affect other people and make them feel great. And lift people up and make them feel exalted. And, and heal people and change their lives. You know, as Jesus did, all Jesus did was wander around from town to town with his buddies, with his ministry. And if he saw something that was needed, he just did it. Oh, these people are starving. I need to make food. Oh, these people don't have wine. I need to make that. Oh, these people have leprosy. I need to fix that. Oh, here's a woman being persecuted. I need to fix that. It wasn't like there was this, you know, thought out game plan for, oh, first I'm going to go here and do this. And people think I'm wonderful. And then I'm going to go over here and go, oh, remember me from this town. I'm wonderful. And then I'm going to do this. It was just really finding out where he was needed and and then going and 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 being and doing we all have the ability to do that and maybe that's what it means that we were made in God's image we were made in the image of the light isn't that beautiful and we have the ability 
to bring that light to the earth every day to help and change people. And that's why I say, embrace the light within you. Find that light. Hold on to that light. Grow that light. And this is what I do every day as an interfaith pastor. And I know every single month in the Saturday night service, spiritual service, I mention what is interfaith. The main reason that I am an interfaith pastor is that within my own belief system as a human being and in my beliefs as a minister, I don't believe in exclusion. I don't believe in excluding anybody. To me, anybody who wants to embrace the light within them has a right to. And they have a right to do it where I'm doing it and be a part of what I'm doing. I don't ever want to do a service where anybody feels like they're being turned away. So all my work as a pastor is based on inclusion. How can I include people? How can I make people feel like they're part of what's happening? They're part of what I'm doing. I hope today, as you're watching this, you're feeling like you're a part of what I'm doing. You feel included in this. Do you feel included in this? I hope you do. So interfaith spirituality includes everyone, discludes no one, doesn't make anyone change. To become interfaith, you don't have to give up being a Christian, give up being Jewish, give up being Muslim, give up being Buddhist, give up being a Mormon. You don't, have, you don't even have to give up being an atheist. All you have to do is embrace the fact that there is this big, beautiful planet, and we live on it, the big blue marble. And everybody, right, on this planet, is a little different and a little the same. So in interfaith spirituality, we embrace, hey, my fellow human beings. Some of them believe what I do and some of them believe different. But guess what? They're allowed to. Because all of us doing our own thing and worshiping in our own way that is what interfaith spirituality is about. I can be doing this service today for, for MCC, Metropolitan Community Church, the Founders Branch, where I am pastored. And I love the fact that right now, somebody, many somebodies, are doing a Christian service. Somebody's doing... Jewish services, others are doing Muslim services, there's Buddhist services, Hindu services, all of it's happening right now, science of mind, and there's somebody talking about why it's okay to be an atheist. All of that falls under the interfaith pie, where everybody has their own slice, because the pie is humanity. And every time somebody turns on a camera or turns on a microphone or steps in front of a group of people to spank their truth for the betterment of everyone. The light grows. When you speak your truth, you're growing the light within you. When you do work on yourself to become a better person, you're growing the light within you. When you make a new friend, you're embracing the light within you. When you kick out some things in your life that aren't healthy, addiction, fear, phobias, intolerances, when you grow beyond those things, you are embracing the light within you. Think like there's a, there's a well inside of you. Think of it like one of those, you know, when you're in Las Vegas and people are drinking out of the science beakers and they're like about this big. I have, my hands can't even go as high as they are. And uh, 
That's what's inside of you, right? A beaker that size lives inside of you. And you have the choice. Whether you're going to fill that with light or you're going to fill it with darkness. And here's the great thing about it. The more you fill it with light, the more the darkness gets pushed out. The darkness just, because light and dark cannot exist in the same place at the same time. So when you embrace the light within you, you also kick out darkness. So you're, in essence, healing yourself by embracing light, by becoming a more positive person. That's great, right? That's the beautiful thing about the energy of you spiritually. It can change every day. You can be the most negative, horrible, hardened criminal. And one day you can wake up in prison and say, you know what? I'm done with this. I'm going to embrace the light within me. And you can start to grow the light within you. And even the most hardened, horrible criminal. As soon as you start to fill that beaker up with light, that darkness starts to move out. Because darkness and light cannot live in the same place at the same time. Isn't that a great story? You know, I talk at Christ Christmas time, my Saturday night spiritual service is always so much about A Christmas Carol. It's my favorite novel. I think it's one of the most beautiful stories ever written. Kudos to Charles Dickens for channeling that beautifulness and bringing it to the world. But it's a true redemption story, right? Scrooge is not a spring chicken. This is a man at the end of his life, right? His... His business partner of the same age has already been dead seven years. He is an elderly guy who has not, since he was very young, done anything good for anybody. Yet he has that awakening. And the next day, he starts to change his life. My mama used to always say, you can't help how you've lived, but you can help how you, but you can't help where you've been but you can help how you live every day. Every day. We can change our lives. Every day we can decide to start gobbling up light. Embracing the light in us. Growing the light within us. Walking our talk. Being the light in the world. Bringing joy to the world. We can do that at any time. And it feels so good when you start to embrace the light. I think that's why we go to church, right? We love that feeling of we gather with others or we're online watching our church. And there's a message or there's music or there's both. And you just feel it move through you and right in your solar plexus chakra here, right? It just lights you up. That's the light within you growing. That's you letting light in. Like that feeling after you laugh, right? When you laugh for like 10 minutes and then you feel like you could just lay down and take the nicest nap for about six hours. It's because the laughter has coughed out, laughed out, expelled from your system. Something that didn't need to be there. And you're just sucking in oxygen and light because you're laughing and you're smiling. And you're growing your light. I want you to think about this. Think about how am I growing my light? And then think about mm, how am I not? How in some ways am I growing negativity within me 
And what can I do to grow my light? How can I become the person who does what I can to fill myself with light every day? How do I do that? And just asking the question, just asking that question pretty much gives you the answer. Because the answer is, just do it, right? What is that expression? There's nothing to it but to do it. I think I say that here a lot. Whatever the message is for the month, I think I say it here a lot. You got to start moving forward. You know, I teach a, a workshop on spiritual path and it's called put one foot in front of the other. And it's, you know, we were kids and there was that the Rankin and Bass Santa Claus is coming to town and the winter warlock is so evil and foreboding as a child. He scared the heck out of me. But then he meets Kris Kringle. And he realizes that it's okay to be somebody who's of the light. And he doesn't know how to do it because he's been dark for so long. And uh, they sing that song, put one foot in front of the other. It's all it takes. Just start walking your path. Just take that step into positivity. Look, I understand that we hold on to negativity. It's like a blanket, right? It covers us. It keeps us numb. It's a cold comfort. It's the devil we know versus the devil we don't. But your light and my light and our light and everyone's light is so needed in the world right now. We need it. We need you. We need you to embrace the light within you. We need you to grow and expand and become warmer and wiser and more beautiful and more loving and more giving. And all those things happen when you embrace the light within you. All of those things. So important. So ask yourself, how can I grow my light? What's the secret to me growing my light? What little things? I always tell people, get a notebook. And I know, I know, I'm Gen X. We like notebooks. But I think there is an organic nature to putting pen to paper and having a separate thing that you can look at. Look, is your phone something you can look at? Yeah. Do I make notes in my phone all the time? Do I do things if I write them in the phone? Sometimes not. I like to put them on paper and put a scratch through them or a highlighter pen over the top. Again, it's I'm in my 50s. But make a list every day. And I don't even want you to start with what you don't have, what you want, what hasn't happened yet, what you're waiting for. Put that in a different book. I want you to get a notebook and on the fur inside the cover of the book, I want you to write in a colored pen that excites you. For me, it would be purple. I am embracing the light within me. Okay. Page one, January 12th, 2024. I am embracing the life with light within me. And then what are you doing? What are you doing? You know, I'll give you mine. I talked to a friend whose mother recently died. I held my cat for about an hour. I, I took five clients and hopefully did something to leave them lighter than when they, when, they, when they came to me. I did a friend's podcast and hopefully that will make people feel lighter when they watch it and it makes him feel lighter for me doing it. I'm here doing this with you. I uh, posted an uplifting post on social media. I've got another one waiting to go. I promote those around everywhere. 
I went through my Facebook and probably put 50 sets of hearts and thumbs up and stars and rainbows on people's posts. It doesn't sound like a lot. I mean, it's, you know, it's almost six o'clock in the evening. I didn't cure cancer. I didn't change the, the trajectory of the earth. You don't have to. Random acts of kindness, little bits of support, sympathy where it's needed. Making somebody smile, making somebody laugh. These are all ways you're embracing the light within you. And mostly it's healing you. Because when you give a healing, right? What do we talk about all the time on here, right? When you give a healing, you get a healing. When God sees you healing, God heals you. Because you have to stay healed so you can keep doing the healing. Spirit doesn't say, go out and heal that person. Oh God, and then I'm going to burn you out so bad you're never going to be able to do it again. You don't see pictures of Jesus sitting by the road like, I healed one person and I just can't do it again. No, you get a healing. So you can keep doing it. That's how nurses and doctors work at four o'clock in the morning and three o'clock in the morning. And, you know, they get up and work 12 hour days. Because as they are healing people, they are given healing so they can keep going. As you embrace the light within you, more light will be given to you. All the light you would ever need exists in the periphery of your life. And you just have to literally pull it down from the heavens. But you have to be willing to do that. To embrace the light within you. And you have to be acknowledging and accepting and encouraging of those that are doing the same thing. You have to embrace the spiritual salad bar that is interfaith spirituality. And say, I'm not a Jewish person, but man, do I love what that rabbi is doing right now. Man, do I love what that cantor is singing right now. Man, do I love how devoted those people are right now. And love that for them. You don't have to do something yourself to love it for somebody else. You can love what somebody else is doing. I never really ever thought I would have kids. And, uh, um, you know, it was a dream that I realized probably wasn't going to happen pretty soon in my life. Um, my own. But, and I've never ever wanted to get married. Um, but man, I love what other people do. I love people's wedding pictures. I love their, my baby was born. Look what my baby did. I don't even have a dog. I love dogs, but I'm kind of a cat person as far as what I, what I need in my life. Man, I love people's dogs. I love to watch dog videos. And that's another part of embracing the light within us, right? Is we're getting to a place where in our lives where we're not just preaching to our own choir. We're not only supportive of the things that we do. We're embracing everything, even things we don't want to do. I don't want to have a snake. But growing up, one of the actors in my first TV show had this boa constrictor. And I love that guy. He was the best actor I ever worked with. He was disciplined. He hit his mark. He was pleasant. Sometimes he'd give you a little kissy kissies with his tongue. I'll never own a snake, but I think it's great if that's what you want, because that's growing the light within you. You're enjoying having that animal companion. There's a guy on Instagram. He kisses this tiger. Have you seen this guy? The tiger's on the ground and he like mouth kisses the tiger. No, 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 it's right in the tiger. I mean, a full grown tiger's right in its face and he's rubbing its face. Like all the stuff I do with my cat. But, you know, my cat weighs 14 pounds. So how much damage could he do? But this guy, 
He's down there with his face in the tiger's mouth. And the tiger's like, oh, he's loving it. I think that's great. I'm going to stick my face in the tiger's mouth. But that's what grows the light within him. And I think that's great. You know, love on a tiger. What is your thing? I talk to my crystals. That's it. Everybody's now turning off their cameras. No more listening to Reverend Sheena. She's a nut. I do. I talk to my crystals. I, I used to name them, but I have so many now that my brain can't comprehend the names. But I talk to them. I hold them and ask them how they are because I believe energy lives within them. I have four haunted dolls. They live in my cabinet right there. I talk to them all. The little one I take with me now. When I travel, I take him with me. He's a, <laughs> he's a lot, but he's my haunted doll. That's it. Everybody, that's more radios. Just more, more cameras just went off. That is embracing the light within you. You find what works for you. What makes you happy? What makes you smile? What makes you feel the most like you? What makes you wake up in the morning and think, I am so happy to be alive and I can't wait to see what this day brings? That is how it feels to embrace the light within you. And that happiness and that sense of fulfillment is so contagious. And other people will gravitate towards you because you feel like that. And that people gravitating towards you, that lifts their vibration. And then they start embracing the light within them. And then it just spreads. Have you ever seen a, a shot of the earth when there was a blackout and everything is dark and then boop, 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 the lights start coming on? That's what it feels like when everyone starts embracing the light within them. Everyone starts turning their inner light bulb on, turning their switch on. And then when someone else's switch is on and you want your switch to be on. It's like when people put their Christmas lights out and you're like, oh, I got to get my Christmas lights right now. Their house is so twinkly, and I want a twinkly house. That is embracing the light within you. And it's contagious. And when you've been hit by that bug, everybody's going to want that bug. Everybody's going to want to know what it feels like to embrace the light within them. Look, and I know the world is hard. People are hard. People do bad things to us every day. Atrocities are committed all over the world all the time. And there's not much we can do about that. Because we can only control us. I can't tell you you're going to wake up tomorrow and all the pain and suffering and hurt and loneliness and starvation and darkness is going to be gone from the world because it's not. But I can tell you that you can wake up tomorrow and suddenly feel better about your life. You can wake up tomorrow and feel like everything isn't so hopeless. You can wake up tomorrow and feel like you are more firmly grounded in your path and your purpose than you have ever been in your life. You can embrace the light within you every single day. And I am promising you that that will make a difference in the world. It will make a difference. Embrace words like optimism, positivity, joy, hope, faith, belief, love, kindness, 
peace, unity. God, spirit, embrace all things that are of the light. And love that. And I hope those are the kind of things that you get every month out of the surface. I hope that you get little, almost like a little guidebook for little things that you can do to make yourself feel better. I think that's what spiritual services for, are for. Um, they're the, so you leave lighter, right, than you came. You leave feeling better about you. You leave feeling more connected within you. You leave having <clears throat> a little bit more self-love and self-belief in you. I think that's so important. And that's, that's so what I'm hoping to be doing here every month. And I hope you'll come and catch it every second Saturday of the month at 5 o'clock Pacific time. And of course, I, we put it all over social media. So you can watch it. And please, if you'd like to donate <clears throat> to MCC, you can go to foundersmcc.org, or I think the easiest way is you can text us, 77977. Um, Let them know you like Saturday Night Spiritual a little bit. That would be great. Um, <clears throat> and of course, uh, find our community page, SaturdayNightSpiritual.com. If you'd like to look at past services, you can go to RevSheenaFoundersMCC.com. If you want to contact me, I'm at SheenaMetalSpiritual.com. Think about it. Think of ways you can increase your light. And remember that that well of light, it exists inside of you. It's just waiting for you to come and embrace it. And if you want to contact me and tell me about ways you've begun to embrace the light within you, I would love to hear it. Let's do this together. I always can do more light embracing. Let's embrace the light within us together. We'll start a movement where we embrace the light within us. Find your light, my friends. You'll feel so much better if you do. I'm Reverend Sheena. This is Saturday Night Spiritual. And... Um, I always end with a poem. Thank you to Founders MCC for having me every month, for allowing me to be a staff pastor. And thank you especially to our senior pastor, Keith Mazingo, whom I love so much, who gave me this wonderful opportunity. You guys have been so wonderful today. There's been so many of you. And I love that. Okay. I'm trying to um, bump this up, so. Okay, here we go. This is called Embracing Love's Light. I find such wonderful poems. It's by Ballad Bell. In the depth of shadows where pain resides, I offer solace which each stroke of my pen. Words like balm, caressing wounded hearts, caring love's essence 
on a gentle breeze. Let me weave verses like threads of hope through the tapestry of your healing journey. Witness the alchemy of my words as they transform anguish into hues of serenity. Like sunbeams dancing upon tranquil waters, let my verses soothe and mend what's torn. Let each syllable like a tender touch convey the warmth of a thousand embraces. And as you find solace in these lines, know that you're not alone in this strife. For my ink is infused with love's healing light, a beacon of compassion guiding you through the night. May these words embrace you like a gentle prayer, sending love and warm wishes beyond compare. Isn't that how we all should feel about our own light? That it's not just healing us, it's healing others. So as Belle talked about the healing pen and the words, you're going to heal by writing down every day how you're embracing the light within you. I'm Reverend Sheena. I'm with Founders MCC. We're here the second Saturday of every month at 5 o'clock Pacific time. Thank you all for being here with me today. Until I see you next time, seek peace, live in love, lead with kindness, embrace unity, always work to raise your vibration and the vibration of those around you. And please know that you are love and you are loved and you're loved by me. I'll see you next time. Good luck embracing that light. You got this.